Hello. This video will just be a basic introduction to the geometric algebras G1, G2, and G3. My hope is that this video will give you a glimpse of the elegant unification of algebras present in geometric algebra. We'll first look at the simplest geometric algebra by extending the real number system to include a vector which squares to positive 1. Any geometric number G in the G1 algebra has this form. Furthermore, it turns out that G1 is just the hyperbolic algebra. Formally, we say that G1 is algebraically isomorphic to H. The hyperbolic numbers are actually a fascinating subject, and I've even made a short video on them. For those who aren't familiar with hyperbolic numbers, here are some key things. There's a conjugate just like in complex algebra, and the magnitude of a number is the space-time interval. Moving to the G2 algebra, we introduce two orthogonal unit vectors, E1 and E2, which both square to positive 1. Any geometric number g in the G2 algebra has this form. Note that there is now a unit by vector which is generated by the unit vectors. Let's now decompose the G2 algebra into even and odd components. The even subalgebra is created by considering parts with no vectors, and the odd subalgebra is created by considering only the vectors. Let's then note something very cool. When you square the unit by vector, you get negative 1. So the even subalgebra is composed of scalars plus a multiple of an entity which squares to negative 1. Remember in my last video how I mentioned complex numbers? Well, the even subalgebra is isomorphic to the complex algebra. As for the odd subalgebra, it's simply isomorphic to the real number plane. Therefore, while the G1 algebra described the hyperbolic algebra, the G2 algebra unifies the complex and real algebras. Let's now consider G3, where we introduce three orthogonal unit vectors which square to positive 1. Now the unit vectors generate three new bivectors and also a trivector. All the bivectors square to negative 1, and so does the trivector. The geometric product, as discussed in the last video, is composed of an inner and outer product. The inner product is the familiar dot product from traditional vector analysis, and the outer product is the bivector generated by two vectors A and B. Pay special attention to property 5. This property represents the mathematical relation, called a duality, between the vector cross product and the three-dimensional outer product. The outer product is the unit trivector times the cross product, where the normal vector from the cross product reduces the trivector to the bivector generated by A and B. But just like with the G2 algebra, the G3 algebra can be decomposed. Let's split it into three parts. The 0 plus 3 subalgebra, which is isomorphic to the complex algebra because the unit trivector squares to negative 1. The vector subalgebra, which is isomorphic to real number space. And the bivector subalgebra, which is, well, what is it isomorphic to? Let's investigate a bit. We first remember that all unit bivectors square to negative 1. We then notice that if we multiply the 1, 2 bivector with the negative 2, 3 bivector, we get the 3, 1 bivector. Similarly, the 3, 1 and 1, 2 bivectors generate the negative 2, 3 bivector, and the negative 2, 3 bivector pairs with the 3, 1 bivector to make the 1, 2 bivector. Then, multiplying all of them out, we get negative 1. So there's obviously a very unique relationship between these bivectors, but what is it? Well, what if I propose the following definitions? That's right! Bivectors are equivalent to the generators of the pure quaternion algebra. This means that the bivector subalgebra of G3 is isomorphic to the quaternion algebra. So instead of thinking of quaternions as these weird unintuitive vectors which generate rotations, we can think of them as bivectors which encode rotation in an oriented plane. All in all, the G3 algebra unifies the complex, real space, and quaternion algebras into one cohesive structure. I mean, that's pretty damn cool. You can also show that the Pauli spin algebra of quantum mechanics exists in G3 as well, but I'm saving that for a later video. Those are the basics of the G1, G2, and G3 algebras. The next video on geometric algebra that I'll make will be very short and only will talk about the basics of rotation in 3D space.